Hi, I'm Sharon Bill. Welcome to my Music Theory Tuition series where I work with you step by step through the ABRSM Discovering Music Theory grades. I'll work through every single exercise and explain everything you need to know. You can access information about the books I have available to help you on my website. Go to SharonBill.com. For advert free and longer lessons, you can become a patron at patreon.com forward slash Sharon Bill. If you can give me a like, that would be super. And please do subscribe to my channel to stay updated. You can support this channel by buying me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com forward slash Sharon Bill. Continuing with the topic of transposition, we move on to page 19 of the Discovering Music Theory Workbook, looking at exercise three. And we now have some questions to answer about transposing to various keys. We're given the first example here, and we're told that the key of D major transposed up a major second becomes the key of E major. So we've gone from major to major key up a major second and we can see that D to E is a full tone, that's a major second, like a full step. And so there's our transposition taking us to our new key. So playing in the key of D major, you will be playing with a key signature of two sharps. And then when you transpose up, you're now going to be playing in a key signature of four sharps. So let's work through exercise three and hopefully you're starting to get the hang of it. It is a tricky subject, it is, I know, and I do understand that and it certainly gets your brain whirring. However, as soon as you feel able, just press pause and try some on your own. Pop back into the video when you've had a go and you can keep popping back and checking. It's much better to learn by your mistakes. It's okay to get it wrong. You will learn much more thoroughly that way. Always work in pencil and then you can just erase it out and have another go. So as soon as you feel able, have a go of these on your own. In the meantime, we'll work through these together. And so the key of G major transposed up a major second becomes, so G major, so G up a major second, a full step up takes us to A. So G major up a major second takes us to A major. So now we are in A major and we need to transpose up a minor third. So A, let's count up three, one, two, three. And that's a minor third because we know that major would be a semitone greater. Major means greater. And we know that A major should have C sharps in the key signature. Always have your major and minor key signatures to hand. And so A to C sharp is major. A to C natural is minor. That's our interval of a minor third. And so we're taking up a minor third to C and we've gone from A major to C major scale. Because it's a minor third, it doesn't mean it's a minor key, that's just the distance that we've traveled to our new key. And now we're going from the key of E minor to another minor key, going up a minor third. And so, E, up a third, one, two, three, takes us to G. Now, E major would be G sharp. That would be our major third. Minor third is lesser. We know that because E major has a key signature of F, C, G sharps and D sharps. We don't want a major third. We want a minor third. We drop down a semitone. And E minor has G naturals. And that's a smaller interval, a semitone smaller, we've dropped down a step, that's our minor third interval. So E upper minor third takes us to G minor. Now we're in the key of D to begin with and we need to transpose up a perfect fifth, so counting a perfect fifth from D, counting D as one, one, two, three, four, five, D to A is our perfect fifth. And so up a perfect fifth from D major takes us to A major. We start off in the key of G major and we need to go up a minor third. So G major, so G 
upper minor third, one, two, three. Well, there's our third, G, A, B, but that's a major third. A minor third is a semitone smaller. And we know that G minor has a key signature of B flats and E flats. G major does not have a key signature of B flats. And so we know that it needs to be the B flat of the minor key. And also minor means smaller, lesser, so that's another clue, and so we're going to B flat. So G upper minor third is B flat. And so G major transposed up the interval of a minor third becomes the new key of B flat major. And so you'd have to play, instead of having F sharps now, you'd have to have B flats and E flats using your new key signature. Let's press on. If you haven't already done so, I suggest that you just kind of go for it now and have a go of some of these and just try some on your own. Press pause, have a crack at it, and then when you've had a go, it doesn't matter if it isn't if you're not utterly convinced, just work it through. You'll think it through more thoroughly by trying it on your own now, and then we can check these last few together. So let's complete this together now. We have the key of E minor and we need to transpose down a major second. So E down a major second. So here is E, that's one down two, one, two. And we know that D to E is a full step. And so we've gone down a full step a major second. And so we've gone from E minor to D minor. Now we're starting the key of D minor and we're going to transpose down a minor third. So let's just look at this. One, two, three. So D minor down a, th a minor third and that is to B because if we're working backwards, B to D sharp would be a major third because we know that B major must have D sharps. B to D is a minor third, we've made it smaller and that's in your minor key. So it's gone to B minor. The key of G major transposed down a minor third becomes, so let's go down three from G, one, two, three. So we've got to E, and now we need to know is that a major or a minor third? And we always count the lowest note as the, the tonic of the interval that we're working from. And we know that E major should have G sharps, so that would be a major third. G natural is the minor third, so E to G is a minor third. And so from G down a minor third, we go to the key of E. And so we've gone from G major to E major. We have the key of G minor to begin with, and we need to go down a perfect fifth. Just be careful you keep going in the correct direction. There's so much to think about, it's easy to get confused, I know. So G down a perfect fifth. G, counting back, one, two, three, four, five. And C to G is a perfect fifth. So going down a perfect fifth. Fifth takes us to C, so we're now in the key of C minor. And then finally E minor, down a minor third. So one, two, three. Now we've just got to be careful here. So there's our third, we know it's C something. However, C to E would be a major third. That's part of your major scale, counted in C major. We know that C to E would be major. And we need it to be a smaller interval, a minor interval is a semitone smaller. And we've actually only gone to C sharp. And we know that C sharp to E in C sharp minor, that is your minor third C sharp. Up a minor third takes us to E. So it needs to be C sharp. Otherwise, we've gone a semitone too far. We're too far. We've got the major. We've got the greater. We need the smaller C sharp. And if we count upwards from our C sharp to E, we can then be sure that's our minor third. So we should be in C sharp minor here. 
And now at the bottom of the page, we have a challenge where we get to uh, transpose a piece of music for ourselves. And so this really puts it all into action. Because the reason you would do this, so here we have happy birthday and we need to transpose these. And the reason that we would do that, it's in C major at the moment. And you know, you could be singing with somebody or you could be playing with a, an instrument and they say, that's, that's too low a key. I can't sing that low or, uh, you know, I'm not comfortable playing in that key or for any number of reasons, or you're playing with another instrument that needs to transpose. And so now you need to tra transpose it up a major second. So the first job, if you remember when we first covered this topic in this grade, is to deal with the key signature, and then we can delay, uh, delay, we can relay all of these notes up a second following on in pattern. And so here we have a key signature of C major. Of course, it could be A minor. We're told here it's C major, but it could be A minor. It doesn't matter because later on, all of the accidentals that may pop up will deal with that. And so C, upper major second, takes us to D. And so we're getting a sneak peek at what's ahead in the next section here. And so we're going to need the key signature of D major, which is F sharps and C sharps. And this is why it's so important to always have your circle of fifths to hand so that you don't need to sort of keep there scratching your head like, oh now what's this and what's D major and what's this key? It's all here for you. We know F sharps and C sharps. And if you can get used to writing it out for yourself, so much the better come exam time. So do look at the circle of fifths video to get that nicely sorted. And now, that's the thinking part mostly done really and I'm just going to kind of get all the nuts and bolts in place and just map out all of my bar lines because we're going to have a lot to think about here and it's best to just deal with things one at a time. My poor little brain can't handle doing everything at once. So we can, we've got our clef, we've got our key signature, we need our time signature and now we've got to transpose everything up a major second. And basically that just means we're going up one step, one full step. So we're going from the line to the space or from the space to the next line up. And so I'm going to keep everything aligned with theirs just so I don't lose track where I am. And I'm just going to get the notes, he note heads in place. Just get the blobs down because we might have some decisions to make with stems, so upper step, that takes us to there, upper step takes us to the D. Now that's a good checkpoint because here that's a C, that's your keynote, here that's a D, that's your keynote, and so we know that's a good checkpoint. Now next door down a step, and I'm looking at the notes in relationship to each other, here we've gone one, two, three, four. We've gone one, two, three, four, a fourth. So we know we've not gone wrong. Now we do exactly the same at the beginning. So we should be down a one, two, three, a third, one, two, three. And that should be the note that I've started with. So another checkpoint there. Up a step. So that's the same. That's the same. Now here, that's going to be a step higher. So that should be a step higher than it was here, which it is. And then here, this is our checkpoint, that's the tonic, that's our keynote, which is next door. So if we go next door, there should be a D and it is. And so I've not gone wrong there. Now I've just got to do the stems. So these stems are going to go up because they're below the middle line. These can go, this can go either way, be in the middle line, I'll have it going up to follow suit, but we've got to change, this has got to come down now because it's above the middle line, same here, and then we're back to stems up, this is the nice easy bit, this is the downhill bit all the way home, stems up, this stem's got to come down, and so is this one, simple as that. I hope this is helpful to your studies. Please do like and subscribe to stay updated. If you'd like to support this channel, you can buy me a coffee. And for advert-free lessons, you can become a patron. 
do visit my website where you'll find many resources available to help you. Visit SharonBill.com. Thanks for watching. Bye.